Starting in verse number 22 of Judges 19, here's what the Bible says. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to mine house, do not this folly. And behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them will I bring out now and humble you them and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where the Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him unto this place. In other words, that woman, listen to me, was dead, been abused all night long by the men of the city, certain sons of Belial. And she called, crawled, and fought her way to the threshold of her master's house where she died. And I want to preach on this thought this morning. Listen to me real close. Dead on the threshold of the church. Dead on the threshold of the church. Please help me pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I've felt your presence. Lord, I've felt your anointing. I know every service is different. And Father, Lord, I'm praying now for your anointing, your touch. Father, to come into this house and anoint me to speak. Father, Lord, I'm asking for your anointing to come in. Lord, I don't know who I'm preaching to. Don't know. Father, don't know. Nobody's talked to me about nothing. But, Father, if they be somebody here that's searching for freedom, searching for a way out, oh, just let me proclaim it to them with liberty this morning. Let an anointing come in this house. Father, Lord, I just stand in dire a need of your anointing. Lord, if your anointing does not come, I cannot preach. I'm just mere flesh and bones. But, Father, Lord, let your anointing just come in this house. Father, anoint me to speak. Anoint the people's ears to hear. And Father, we'll stand on the word that says if we open our mouth that you will fill it. And we ask it in the most wonderful, precious name of Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Go back to Judges 19, verse number 1. We want to preach on the thought, dead on the threshold of the church. And in verse number 1 of Judges 19, here's what the Bible says. And it came to pass in those days that there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah. And there was four whole months. Now listen to me. The Bible said, first of all, when there was no king in Israel, I want you to see the spiritual state of Israel at this time, the spiritual state of Israel. It was one that was in a complete state of lawlessness. There was no king. They had no king over them. The, I know it's the book of Judges, but it would have been in the, in the time maybe between Judges or, or before the Judges was ever set up, and Israel was in a complete state of lawlessness. Now listen to this real closely. Every single one that was in this room at one point of your life or another, you lived your life in a complete state of lawlessness. And in other words, what I mean by that 
that was you lived your life without God. You lived your life without the Lord. You lived your life with nothing restraining you and the, the works of the flesh and all of your sins. Whatever, whatever you wanted to do, you went out and done. If you wanted to go get drunk, what did you do? You went and you got drunk. If you wanted to go get high on, on marijuana, go get high on cocaine, do you know what you did? You just went out and done whatsoever thing you wanted to do. Well, that's where we find Israel at this time. They had no king. They had no ruler. There was no laws in the land. They could do whatever they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. And I want you to see the picture. That's, a, that's unregenerated man. That's man before he accepts Christ. That's man before he is converted. That's man before he gets saved. Somebody say amen. You had no restraint on you. Can I get a witness? Can I tell you what's going on in America today? They're working to a time to where they don't want restraint on them. If they want to be a homosexual, they want the government to say it's okay to be a homosexual. They want to legalize this and they want to legalize that. Somebody say amen. And I want you to see, the, listen to what the Bible says about this. Judges 17 and 6. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Understand that. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Can I say this to you? There was a time in my life after I got away from my mom and daddy, actually right before I, I really got married, but right before I really moved down and got on my own, I went through a little season of my life. I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and drink and get drunk. I'll just go ahead and smoke and I'll just do this and I'll just do that. And it wasn't too long before too long. Guess what? My life was in a mess and I was in a state of confusion. I had no lawlessness. I figured out that one cigarette led to two and one drink led to three and four drinks led to ten. Somebody say amen. Until before too long I was in a state of lawlessness. I mean my mind and, and I could do whatever I wanted to do. I thought my Lord, i am finally been free from out up under my mama and my daddy. And can I tell you what happened? That state of lawlessness brought me to a place uh, to where it was utter devastation. That's what's going on in Israel. The Bible said that listen, there was no law restraining them. In other words what they did, they did with their lives whatsoever things that they thought was right. Somebody say amen. Well, can I tell you, I learned out what I thought was right was wrong, and what I thought was wrong was right. Somebody say amen. That's the state of Israel just trying to get to a point. Let me go ahead and dig into this a little more. Proverbs 16 and 2. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Let me read it to you again. All of the ways of man are clean clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Proverbs 21 and 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Listen to me. The state of lawlessness is the state that we lived in before we was converted into grace, before we got saved, before we give our hearts to the Lord. We'd done whatever we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. Nothing was restraining us. Somebody say amen. Do you really realize that there's nothing restraining unregenerated man? Oh, first of all, let me tell you this. If you're unregenerated and you're not saved and you're not living for the Lord, what the devil tells you to do is what you do. What your flesh tells you to do is what you do. Oh, somebody's not hearing me. And you are living in a very state of lawlessness. There's no order. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. And you really be honest with yourself. You're miserable and you're full of destruction and you're looking for a way out. Let me go ahead and preach. Judges 19, 1 through 2, and it came to pass in those days that there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And this concubine played the whore against him and went away from his father's unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. Before I really get into preaching, let me just show you this. A certain Levite, that represents the law of Moses or religion. 
That represents, that certain Levite represents the law of Moses or religion. I know some of you looking at me like I'm preaching in Greek right now, but understand this. Anything other than faith in the finished work of Christ is a law or it is a religion. Listen to me. It's not Christianity. And God has never called us to be religious. He's called us to be Christ-like. Somebody needs to say we're not to be formed in the image of what some man thinks we need to be formed in. We're not to be formed in the image of what some church says that we're supposed to be conformed to but we are to be conformed into the very image of Christ so the picture we've got here first of all this Levite which represents the law of Moses or religion he took him a wife that wife was of complete lawlessness in other words listen what we've got is we've got an unsaved man or a woman that's trying to get right with the Lord and finds themselves being married to a law or to a religion Y'all with me now. Don't let me get too deep for you. So this certain Levite took for him a wife. Here, listen to this. If you're writing this down, because you need this if you're going to help me preach. This woman rest represents people who are truly looking for help from a church or from the Lord. This woman represents somebody who's on drugs. This, this woman represents somebody who's lived their life in complete lawlessness and they've drawn to a time to their, in their life where they're tired of living like that and they've come to a church house or they fell up on their knees or they've come to a Christian and they've said these words, I want to quit living like I'm living. I'm ready to surrender to the Lord. I'm ready to get my life straight. Or listen to me, there's another one. People sitting in churches who have things in their lives that they can cannot overcome. Now we're going to preach. So this certain Levite, which represents religion, went out to find him a wife and took him a wife of a, from Bethlehem, Judah. Listen to this real close. And this wife was completely lawlessness. She had no laws in her life. She had no morals. She had no self-respect. Whatever she wanted to do, she did. That's unregenerated man. That's people on drugs. That's people that's out in sin. That they're tired of living like they're living and they're wanting to get some help. My God, listen to this. People sitting in churches who have things in their lives that they cannot overcome. But listen to what the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 1 says. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. For the woman which he hath in husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she's loosed from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she's free from the law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another. Now listen to me some of you sitting there thinking my Lord that just confused me but basically it's this. Uh, listen as long as you're living under the law you're bound to the law. Somebody say amen. When you're born into this world you are born into the law in other words what it is the law is telling you that you are a sinner the law is telling you that you can't go out and get drunk the law is telling you you can't go out there and get high the law is telling you thou shalt not kill thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not commit adultery oh somebody's not hearing me now that's what the law says and as long as you live you are bound by the law but listen these people come to church and they come to an altar and sincerely pray for help and all the church can tell them is this you just have to stop you just have to quit you just can't do that no more and the church cannot offer them anything to help them because if they could have quit they would have done quit and they never had to come to the church house to begin with so I want to preach this so what the church does people that's in lawlessness they come to church and they really want help and they really want to be delivered and all the church can tell them is they, they give them nothing to hold them they give them nothing to help them. See, that's what religious does. And I want you to see the picture here of this woman who come in off the streets, who was a hearted of the night. Oh, maybe she was a drug addict. Maybe she was just a prostitute. Maybe she was this and maybe she was that. And she come in here on a Sunday morning and she fell up on her face before God and she, she said, I need help. And some little old scribe or Pharisee takes him by the hand and says, I can tell you how to overcome your problem. You've just got to learn to do better that's the picture we're getting now 
Can I tell you why I'm not trying to be mean? But the churches ain't got nothing to offer nobody no more. There's no anointing. There's no conviction. There's no spirit. And when people come into the house, they sit there. They don't even feel convicted of their sins because not only is the world in complete lawlessness, but it's crept into the church now. And because the church is in complete lawlessness and they don't know how to get free, they can't help nobody else get free. Oh, somebody go help me preach now. So we've got this certain Levite, a religion, that set out in the world, went and found him a lawless wife. And the Bible said that that lawless wife become married to that certain Levite. In other words, she come married to religion. And it wasn't too very long. Can I tell you what happened? She got discouraged. She got just out feeling at a place to where she didn't want to be there no more. It become just mundane. It just becomes something that was a circle and there was given no help. And the very things that she was fighting outside of the doors of the church, when she come into the sides of the doors of the church and some self-righteous Lucy went and told them, if you're really saved, you won't be doing that no more and you've just got to learn how to quit. And all they done was got religious and had the same things they were fighting before all they done was put on a new skirt somebody say amen sit in a church house still a prostitute still a drug addict still a woman of the night somebody say amen because the church has nothing to offer people who are wanting help but I've come by this way this morning to tell you you don't have to leave here like you came in Jesus name there is help for the hopeless there is a way that leads you out of sin and shame it's called the way of holiness it's called the blood of Jesus oh somebody needs to hear me it's called grace so this woman listen to me how many's ever seen it in church people come into a church house really just caught up in their lives I mean to tell you they're miserable with the way they're living and they come down to a church and everybody says hallelujah they've got religion And a few months down the road, guess what happens? They're no longer in the church no more. Because they got tired of living. And the thing that they thought was freedom, and the thing that they thought was a way to get out of their sins and a way to get out of their addictions, they found out that not only did it not break an addiction, it caused them to be more bound up because now they were still an addict. And there's somebody, some self-righteous scribe or Pharisee has come and put a yoke on them that's called a law and telling them if you're going to overcome it, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it that way. And the last state of that religious person is worse than the first state. They would have been better if the church would have just left them alone and let them go about their way instead of offering them something that won't hold them offering them something that won't keep them but I gotta tell you like I preached last week you get a hold of the real rock you hold on to it it'll hold on to you it'll keep you from backsliding it'll keep you from doing this it'll keep you my God somebody the church don't need a religion they need Christ and Him crucified they need grace working and living in their lives I'll get ahead of myself and this concubine played a whore against this Levite and went away from him into her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah and was there for whole months. Get the picture. Get the picture here. This woman who was an addict, this woman who was a prostitute, a lady of the night, come down to the church and instead of finding freedom, found religion. Instead of finding liberty, found a cloak to just cover them up just to make them look like they were everything, but on the inside of them, they were still dying. On the inside of them, they were still an addict. And after a period of time, guess what? That woman drew grown weary because all the church had to offer them was this activity and that program. All the church had to offer them was this and that. Had to come to this psychological problem on Monday night, then you had to come back on Tuesday night for the, for the pastor to counsel you. On Wednesday night, we got church. On Thursday night, we got celebrate recovery. On Friday night, we're going to send somebody over to your house just to make sure that you're not doing the things that you said that you're not going to do. 
on Saturday. You got to come back and pray in the house all day. And then you got church on Sunday. And what all the church has got to offer people now is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, an activity, a program. There's no freedom in that. That's nothing but religion. But I want to tell you whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Somebody needs to hear me. And so this woman, listen to me. Listen to me. After all of these months, don't know how long it was, she come in and she was really looking for freedom. And all that Levite had to offer her was condemnation for her sins, but no freedom and no way out of it. So it wasn't too very long. Guess what she did? She grew weary and she grew tired of that regimen that somebody threw on her. And she said, listen, where's what I'll do? I'll just go ahead and go back to my father's house. And what happens? We get alcoholics in. We get drug addicts in. We get prostitutes in. We ain't got nothing to offer them to get them free. And before too long, they grow weary. They grow tired of sitting on a church house pew and not getting no help. So they go right back to their father, the devil. That's the cycle that you're seeing in the picture here. Because I want to tell you, first of all, the law and religion will never offer you anything to help you. My God, let me preach just a little bit. Here's what Paul said. Paul said, I went through the same cycle when I first got saved. Here's, listen to me. Romans 7, 24, here's what Paul would cry out. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of of this death. The apostle Paul spent a season in his life to where, listen to me, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees when he seen Jesus on the Damascus road. He turned his life around, but in his mind he thought this, the way that I please the Lord is I've got to live by his law. I've got to, I've got to keep this regimen of, of do's and don'ts. I've got to keep this systematic religious thing. Of, I've got to do this and I've got to do what they tell me to do because that's the way I was raised. And he got to a point in his life that he said, listen, I'm wanting to live right I'm wanting to be free and the more the more that I have willpower to do it the more I find myself failing and find myself messing up he said these words in Romans 7 24 oh wretched man that I am in other words listen to me his, his second state was worse than his first state see before when he was just a Pharisee he didn't have the law condemning him but now that he's tried to turn his life around but he's not found out how to live for the Lord yet the law is condemning him so now not only is he a Pharisee not not only is he messed up in this, not only is he messed up in things of this world, now he's got the law of God bringing, breathing down his neck every single day, every single hour. I want to tell you that's what our churches have turned into. And they tell you that if you mess up, that you're a sinner. We don't want you in the house no more. Well, excuse me. I've made mistakes myself. I've messed up myself. But religion didn't push me. Religion pushed me down. But Jesus picked me up. Religion shut me down a little bit farther. But but the real spirit of God would pick me up every time and tell me, you can't waller in your mess. You go ahead and get out, son. Wash yourself off in the blood of Jesus and go on about your life. So this Levite goes out and gets her from her father's house. Go home and read the story. He goes to the father's house, the father-in-law's house, to fetch his bride back. And he takes her back home and on his way back home he realizes it's getting dark. So he said these words when I get to Gibeah. Oh, a wife of mine, we'll find us a place to lodge for the night. And he finds, them, he finds themselves in Gibeah and there's nobody that will show him hospitality. There's no Motel 6s like they are today. And they find themselves just sitting in the streets in the, in the middle of a lawless town. And when they sit there after dark, they're sitting there, here comes a man out and sees them and offers them a place to stay. He said, I'll put you donkeys up. I'll give them enough food and a provender and I'll give them a shelter. I'll give them everything you need and you and your concubine can come in my house and can stay this night. But listen to me real closely. I want to tell you the law can never give you protection in your midnight seasons. The law of God and religion. I don't care what it wraps itself up with. I don't care if religion wraps itself up in the church of God, in the assemblies of God, in the Methodist, in the Presbyterian, in a 12-step program. The law 
law of God can never offer you nothing in your night seasons that's going to hold you, that's going to comfort you, that's going to be a peace to you. Somebody say amen. And I don't care who you are, you're going to have night seasons. I don't care how long you serve the Lord, you're going to have a night season. But can I tell you what I want? I want something in the middle of the night time that will hold me and sustain me while I'm trying to sleep. Here's what old Psalmist David said in Psalms chapter number 3. He said, I laid me down and I slept and the Lord sustained me. The Spirit of the living God held me. I want to tell you religion will not hold you. And I want to tell you right here what I'm fixing to preach. I want to show you what religion will do to you. They wouldn't show him hospitality. A man comes out of the field and offers them a place to stay. Who we pick up in verse number 22 of Judges 19. I'm going to preach. I'm just trying to get it to it. Judges 19 and 22. Now as they were making their hearts merry. First of all, listen to me. Religious people in religious churches, they only get you in their doors and on their membership roll for one reason. For what you can offer them. Somebody needs to help me preach this for you. I said religious folks, they're not out there to really see your soul prosper. They're not out there to really see you get born again and saved and set free from your addictions. They want you because they want a number on their roll. They want to offer it in their plate. They want their tithes to be paid when they come around and they can go to the Hardee's on Sunday mor- on Monday morning and sit around and brag about how many come in to their church and how much money they took in. Because all you are is a number to somebody religious. I'm preaching this morning. And now as they were making their hearts merry, behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, bring forth the man that came into thy house that we may know him. In other words, they were homosexuals. No need to dig into that. And the man, the master of the house, went unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, Nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to my house. Do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine them. I will bring out now and humble you them and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine. It really means he took her by force and forced her to go out to the men. Somebody hear me when I preach to you. So he took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. In other words, listen to this in her night season in the season she needed her master the most what did her master do the master said I would rather get some rest here you go go ahead and take this woman this concubine of mine she's nothing but an old harlot anyway can I tell you what religion does here's what the Bible says The Bible says that the good shepherd talking about Christ will lay his life down for the sheep. But let me tell you what the hireling does. And that's all that Levite was, was a hireling. That scribe and that Pharisee was a hireling. Said that when danger comes and trouble arises, they'll flee it to go save themselves. And that's exactly what religion will do to you. Somebody needs to hear me. When you need them the most in your night season, they'll go ahead and push you out and force you up to your enemies instead of covering you with prayer and holding on to your hands. Somebody needs needs to hear me because listen all you are to them is a merchandise Oh, somebody needs to hear me and if you fall prey they'll just go find them somebody else somebody needs to hear me now they don't care about your soul they don't care about your spiritual well being all they care about is in the night season they're going to stay home in their bed curled up in their quilt and curled up in their in their comforter and they're going to stay warm and dry while you're out being abused all night long Am I preaching this morning or not? This is different for me. But I want to tell you, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be unkind. But our churches have lost their anointing. Our churches have lost their spirit. They've got another one in replace of it. But they've lost everything that they're supposed to be. 
And I want to tell you, listen to me, they offer nothing to hold you in your storms of life. Somebody don't want to hear me preach. And when you mess up and you make a mistake, can I tell you what the law of Moses and the scribes do? They'll come hunt you down. But they'll stand over and call you every name in the book and tell you if you was truly born again, you wouldn't have been out doing what you was doing. You wouldn't have been out there hanging out in that bar. Well, I agree with him. You shouldn't have, but it ain't my place to tell you that. You've got one that judges you, and that's the Spirit of the living God. It ain't my place to judge. It ain't my place to condemn. It's my place to come into that harlot house on that barroom stool to come and hold your hand and tell you there is a God out there that loves you. He loves you just as much now as He loved you when you were my God before you got on drugs. There's a God out there that before the foundations of the earth was ever laid, He done made up His mind. I don't care if they got a needle in their arm, a bottle in their hand. I'm going to go to earth and I'm going to die and lay down my life for them. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. Oh, oh, somebody. Hey, can I tell you what happens in religion? Religion will stand over you and condemn you. Make you feel about this high. But can I tell you what the Bible says? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Listen, religion will never condemn you. It will never feel, make you my God. True Christianity, excuse me, will never condemn you to a place till you feel this high. I don't care how much you mess up, the Spirit of God will come to you and when He comes to you and leaves, you'll know you're loved. You'll know that He cares for you. Somebody needs to hear me. You'll know that if He laid His life down for you one time, He'll lay it down for you again if that's what He's got to do to pull you out of the briars, to pull you off the cliff. Somebody needs to hear me. I said the churches need to get back this day of time. We need to point people to the true shepherd of their souls we need to reject religion and get a hold of Jesus Christ oh my Lord and this woman found her place religion come to her you know what she thought maybe he does love me Satan's the master of deceit and if it ain't Christ and him crucified it's a religious Beast. Somebody help me preach. And it won't hold you when you're in trouble. See, I want a hold of something when I'm standing behind caskets that'll hold me. I want a hold of something that when I'm being tempted to go get drunk and to go shoot up, that in the midnight hour will stand around me and make up a hedge. Somebody needs to hear me when I'm preaching to you that'll come to me in the middle of all my storms of life and will pull me out. But I'm not trying to be mean, but your average Joe Church does not offer that no more because they've never been partakers of it, so they can't offer it to you. Oh, my Jesus. And listen to me, this is what the law does. It points out your sins. But it does not offer you anything to fix them. Religion will point out every problem and flaw you've got. But it will never offer you a solution. At least not that will work. I got some more preaching to this morning. Y'all help me for just a moment. Romans 8 and 3 tells us these words. That law or religion can never bring freedom. Do you know why? Because it is weak through your flesh. If it's not Christ, it will leave you hopeless. I don't care how much you try to get free. You are weak through your flesh. And you cannot get free, separated from Jesus. Jesus said these words, I'm the true vine and you can't do nothing without me. Oh, my Jesus, I'm preaching. Judges 19, 26 through 27. So then came the woman in the dawning of day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord 
rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were up on the threshold. Listen to me real closely now. I want to tell you that's where religion leaves you. In your not seasons, it'll flee from you and it'll leave you through your storms and through your battles and your kicking, your clawing, your screaming, you're doing everything you can to survive. But when daylight comes, listen to me, it'll, religion will find you with your hand on the threshold of the door trying to just cling to life while somebody's not hearing me. Can I tell you what happens when most people get saved in most churches? Uh, listen, listen, they do good for a season uh, because they've got friends and they do something this, but some self-righteous, somebody comes up and offers them and tells them, if you're going to get free, you're going to have to do this and have to do that. No, can I tell you how you get free? By simply believing on the name of the Son of God. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. There's no other way Jesus said these words I am the way I am the truth I am the life and no man cometh to the Father but by me somebody needs to hear me preach I don't care how pretty it wraps itself up I don't care how full the church house is I don't care how big of a building they've got if they're not offering you Christ and Him crucified and His righteousness and His holiness is what you need you better run you better flee you better leave because it'll leave you with your threshold it'll leave you with your hands on the threshold of the church door dead and let me tell you what happened to this man this man, this religious man stayed out all night sleeping while his supposed bride was being abused at the hands of homosexuals And when he got up the next morning, he opened up the door and there he was. Can't find in my Bible anywhere where he wiped a tear. Can't find in my Bible anywhere where he was sorrowful for what happened. He kicked her and said, up, let's go. But she was dead. And I'm not trying to be mean this morning, but this is what the Lord's dropped in my spirit this week. Church houses all throughout this valley. I'm not trying to be mean, unkind, and I know if they get wind of this, they're going to be mad at me, but let them be mad. Sometimes it's got to be exposed. I don't care how much Bible they know. I don't care how religious they seem. If you don't get a hold of the real truth, and find you a true shepherd to hold you. I don't care how much they smile. I'm walking careful now. But when you fall into your storms in the night, they will do just like the Levite. That's what religion will do to you. And I would I hate to say that untold million today as I've been preaching have walked into the back doors of a church and sat on a pew looking for freedom and there was no freedom to be found. Because first of all, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So if the Spirit of the Lord, there, if the Spirit of the Lord is not there, there's no liberty to be found. My God, I'm preaching this morning. And even if they preach a good message from the pulpit and they truly get you to a place to where you're saved and in grace, if you're not real careful, they'll rush you off into a back room and give you a pamphlet and tell you this is what you've got to do to be free. It's a law. It's religion. And it will do nothing but bind you up more than it was when you walked in the door. And I hate to say it that in this valley there's drug addicts and there's drunks and there's uh, homosexuals, there's lesbians. They've walked in the, in the door the door of the church house. They sit on the pew looking for hope, looking for freedom and they have found none. But now can I preach for just a little bit and then I will let you go. And I don't know how else to preach this other than to just preach it. Romans 8, 3 through 4. Listen to this real close. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh 
God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Listen, anything other than Christ and him crucified is the flesh. Anything other than God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and dying for you, it is flesh and it is law. Somebody needs to hear me. Well, I preach, here's what I feel in somebody say. Well, how can you say that's flesh? That's law. Because listen, the law left you on your own to fulfill the righteousness of the law. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. So all law does is tell you what you need to do, but don't give you the power to do it and leaves you in your flesh trying to please God. But let me tell you what true grace does. When you put your faith in a man named Christ, his spirit comes and lives on the inside of you. It gives you power. It gives you the ability. All the Bible says, listen, it's for God that both work in me both to will and to do of his good pleasure listen to me my friend have I had to offer and have I had to use any willpower yes you better believe it but outside of Christ there's not enough willpower to say no to the drugs there's not enough willpower to say no to the alcohol but listen to this I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me and what the law could not do because it was weak in the flesh God sent his own son in the flesh and said I'll do what they can't do I'll fulfill what they can't fulfill somebody needs to hear me and the only path of freedom is found in a man named Jesus Christ all other ground is sinking sand I just want to read you a couple more scriptures Jesus did what you could not do he lived a life that was without sin Ephesians 2 4 through 10 but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved and hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them me and brother Jason's on the same page week after week if you're missing Sunday school you're missing half of what you need 1st John 5 3 through 5 for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous listen you got the love of God there's not one commandment he's got that's grievous can I tell you what true Christianity is motivated by love love for God and love for one for another And if you don't have either one of them, you you can't have one without the other. If you ain't got both of them, you better step back and check your salvation. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. His commandments are not grievous for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is He that overcometh the world? But He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Y'all missed it there. Somebody help me preach. The Lord's dealing with somebody this morning. I don't know everybody. I don't know your secrets. I don't know your problems, but the Bible says the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So sometimes when I get in the anointing, I start feeling something. Somebody tired of living the life you live in. You might even just be a Christian that comes to church every week and you're tired of dealing with some of the the, the, the problems that you've got in your life and even though you've come to church and heard all the preaching, you still have not found out the solution to the problems you're dealing with and you think that if you think better, if you think positive, if you get up in the morning and say, I'm a child of God, I'm not going to do this, that, that that helps you. Well, it don't help you. Positive thinking don't help you. The only thing that helps you is believing that Jesus was the Son of God putting your faith in the the finished work of Christ and then you'll watch and you watch those problems will just disappear I'm preaching this morning because John 8 36 says if the son therefore 
shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. Oh, my Jesus. When I prepared this and the Lord laid on my heart, I'm going to tell you my first thought. And I'm fixing the clothes. Come on, Brother Robert. My first thought was this. I don't need to give an altar call. But I want to tell you, the Lord's changed my heart this morning. Because I'm going to tell you what I feel in my spirit. Somebody here wanting to be free so bad. And you've searched. You've searched this avenue. My God, I'm going to tell you what I'm feeling. Maybe you've even searched AA. Maybe you've searched NA. Maybe you've searched this avenue and that avenue. Maybe you've went to this church looking for freedom here and you have not found it. Maybe you are somebody who comes to church week after week and six months later when you thought you would be free from it, you're still dealing with it every day. I'm not saying you're not saved. All I'm saying is Christians sometimes have things in their life that need to be dealt with. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know I'm feeling it strong. Can we all stand to our feet this morning? I took this pulpit simply to tell you this. You thinking better is not the solution. I'm going to tell you something else too, and it's going to go against some people, some self-righteous folk going to get mad at me. Reading your Bible 10 hours a day is not the solution. Praying three or four hours a day is not the solution in itself. Well, preacher, I'll fast. Fast gives me power. Fasting gives me power. That's not the answer in itself. If your object of your faith is not the finished work of Christ, and that's where your faith is anchored tonight. I don't care how religious you are. I don't care how bound up you are. You'll never get free. But if you can have your faith in what Jesus did for you and the blood that he shed for you, I want to tell you truly and honestly, you won't leave here like you came. And I'm going to go ahead and say this because I'm just believing in faith. Somebody's going to respond. When you're, out, when you're out on your job, when you're out in your school, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the devil's going to do everything he can to get your eyes off of Christ. But as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus of Nazareth, I'm talking to somebody, this is the only way to get free. I'm telling you, I've proclaimed it this morning with everything that I got. I'm going to tell you what else I'm feeling. I know I'm getting lengthy in my order call, but listen, I feel somebody who's tried things. And you've been just like that woman. And you found yourselves the times you thought you was going to get free. You died in the midnight hour with your hand on the threshold of the church. But you can't do it through church. It's got to be done through Christ. And every head bowed, every eye closed. Please, no looking around. 